Greetings, it's teardown time and what I have for you tonight is a Panasonic Pocket PC model number CFP1 this is one of the original ones with a 206 megahertz SA1110 processor not the easiest of things to use so I'm going to be quite happy to tear this down Don't know how well the screen is showing up on there. So you've got a task there, tear it down. By not easy to use, I'll give you an example now. Let's edit this. Change the time to... I'll change to the 10th. And you can see it's moved up to that time forward. Let's change it to... 12.30. And now it's decided that that time has gone to quarter past one instead of mid nearly midnight. This makes Outlook 2010 look easy and flexible and user friendly to use. That's how bad this is. But that's just one of the features. This is actually running. Let's look. It's running Pocket PC version 3. It's got 64 meg of memory, which I think it uses compression on. Uh, it's got, let's see, Internet Explorer, if you use the GPRS modem, which is built in. Pocket Excel, really see using doing spreadsheets on that. Uh, it's got Pocket Word. Windows Media will support, I think it's WMV8. So the 7 or 8 is the newest one it'll do. I do have a file in here which it won't let me get up. Oh, there we go, I've got one stored in here. This is the old Twin Transformer Jacob's Ladder one that I did with Photonic Induction that I can't select. Oh, there we go. Does work. Uh, the, the frame rate isn't exactly impressive. Let's just play that. If it catch up. As you can see, full motion video isn't really its speciality. So, uh, I don't think I'll be watching any films on this anytime soon. Battery's quite good on it. It's, um, considering this has been sitting sitting in a box under the stairs literally for years and I've dug it out, charged it up and it seems to work fine so as I said it appears to have compressed memory because I'll show you that file now Oops. go into settings, system, memory I'm using 13 meg out of the 64 meg in total, in fact, out of the 30 meg allocated for programs. So I'm using 13.79 meg. Nothing in the storage card. It's got a 1 gig. Well, in fact, it'll take a 2 gig SD card slot on the side, but it only reports 1 gig. I assume it'll use the whole lot, though. Uh, let's see what we have. We have a file explorer. Considering using, se I've got 17 meg in use. There's a 28 and a half meg file there. That's the video I was watching just now. And to prove that it is that file, oops. Yeah, access is denied because I'm running 
under his media still. And to get rid of that, I'll go to going to start settings system memory running programs and get rid of Windows Media from there. Right now I can go in. delete that file you can see there we go so it's using some sort of compression on that it will work with fingers as well as you can see the keypad is optionally backlit I'll just off the light for a sec See, we've got a nice green backlit keyboard. The screen's a bit difficult to see on the camera, and it's not much better in real life, actually. It is a bit washed out, although this is running at full brightness. Let's give you a little tour of it. We've got infrared port. SD card slot, expansion port which will go amongst other things into the dock like that for charging. There's a DC input jack on the side. There we go, which is actually the same as the one on the dock. There's a headphone jack. speaker, microphone, this does have a um, dictaphone feature built into it, uh, not really the best, it's, uh, how do I do that, it has to a new, new note, there we go, it's recording now, I don't know how, what that's going to do, how far it's going to record, whether it's a little burst of note and then it's going to run out when that gets to the end, I don't know, we're going to see, I'll just waffle on and on and on until it, it just cycles around, okay, but It's not the best, is it? Um, what this has got as a benefit, really, is it's very rugged. As you can see, it's um, it's a magnesium case, except for the, the top there, which is plastic. There's an antenna in there. I'll show you that in a sec. Um, there's a lithium-ion battery behind here. You won't find a battery like that in a PDA these days. A 7.4 volts, 2.1 amp hour lithium ion. And as I said, under the top we have oops, the antenna and a card slot. This doesn't work as a phone as far as I as far as I know, but it can use that as a GPR, GPRS radio, no 3G on this. Let's take a look inside. We have a CF slot here, taking compact flash cards or presumably compact flash accessories as well. This does come with other options such as barcode scanners and whatnot. So it may be for that or it may be just for memory, I don't know. I 
don't think there's much to show in here. We've just got yeah, spotted. This is where its secondary battery is. Obviously, you've got the main battery, but there's an auxiliary battery as well, so it remembers things. The wonderful thing we used to find with some of the PDAs at work a few years back is that if you let the battery run right down, and I mean right, right down, you basically forget everything. All your diary, everything you're supposed to be doing, I think they'd even forget your address book. So you don't want to run them all the way flat. And this one has got, I assume, a great big coin cell glued there. Let's take a look at that before we do dive further into that. Now this is a VL3032. So that's 30 millimeters across, 3.2 millimeters thick, and being this is either a VL or a UL on there. That, yes, it looks like a lithium battery, and that's because it is a lithium battery, but the VL is a vanadium lithium battery, so that is actually rechargeable, which is nice. That's what we're doing here. There's another board here. I think it's just a board. It's the speaker, the battery connection went there. And there's a switch contact there, so obviously it knows knows when the battery trays when that latch is flipped open on the on the battery cover so it knows if you open that open that look at this rubber seal all the way around and magnesium case I'll be having some fun with that probably in another video. So what else do we have? The CF card slot there. There's the cable which went up to the top to the what is basically nothing more than a SIM card slot. Look at that in a sec. Oh, bones on the back of this. That's the compact flash card slot. On the back of this, we have an LCXR one six double two double four, which is a sixteen bit buffer. I think that's what it is. Let's look at it online a second in the up corner. Sixteen non inverting buffers, and the other chip is a sixteen bit bi directional transceiver. That's an LCX one six double two four five. There are also some smaller ICs on here, which are just marked up as 2548-1. Eight pin chips. Oh, there's another tiny, tiny chip there. Focusing on that, which is just marked as E2. No idea what that is. There's going to be loads of components in here, which is going to be near impossible to find out what they are. We have a 
Hope someone finds this interesting, by the way. Another two screws and a bit of cap done holding this in. It's for the antenna. So this is the GPRS module. It doesn't particularly want to come out of there. There are these small connectors here. Whether MCX or MMCX or something like that, you'll often find these connectors inside um, wireless kit. Things like wireless access points, uh, wireless LAN cards, connecting they're very small antenna connectors. just hold those up to the camera and hopefully block enough of the lens it will focus in there we go there you go the screws so this is the GPRS module which I shall open up it's only a few screws You can see there's some capped on tape there acting as a strain relief to take that. Oops, that way, yeah, there we go. Okay, there's not much to show on this chip wise, there's just that really. This, which is an LCX08, which is a quad 2 input AND gate. Same as a 7408, but these are low voltage chips with 5 volt tolerant inputs, so they'll take higher voltages, but they run on presumably 3.3 volts. There's another chip on the back. Which is a 2301573. God knows what that is. Oh, and there's another chip. My God. The more you look, the more you see. We have a T28 AAL. And an LTKD. As I said. No idea what these are. Right. This is a module that's not made by Panasonic. It's a Siemens MC35. You see there's the antenna connection there. It went off to the bottom of the bottom of the case first because there's a connector here for an external antenna or presumably if you're using this in a car or something um, you can use it as a car cradle it's a shame it's got all these metal cans on it at least you can't see inside Silver looking IC is marked up as an MC1748B, which would be a high performance op amp. But those are normally in an 8 pin dip chip, and this is a this is 10 pin. It may be that the extra pins are because it's in a metal case though. We also have an EPCOS JPR0B7302, which is a low loss filter for mobile communications. An Infineon 6253 V1.1 Smart Eye Plus, which is an RF multiband transceiver. There's another component under a metal can which is marked Y64CD116. Very little else on there. Under the next lid, we have another metal component Y1670228. Yet another one which is completely unlabeled, which is another 10 pin ceramic chip with a metal lid which in fact has two even smaller chips on it a chip which is marked 23621 e which is 10 pins and I have no idea what it does it's a small BGA chip marked XM17AB again no idea what that is by no idea, 
I don't mean I don't know off the top of my head. I'm not rattling these off the top of my head. As I'm calling these out, I'm checking online and then telling you what they are and chopping all the gaps out in between. Another chip which is marked RF21740225 25N2. I'm not even going to bother looking that up. Or its neighbouring RF21730263 PP. Uh, 23AJ241 SLB LMV. These are all radio components. God knows what they what they do. Flipping to the other side, we have an Infineon PMB 6850E, which is again another smart eye chip, I believe. We have a Dialog D0839BB. And again, I can't find any details on that, although Alibaba are offering me plenty of them. We have what looks like, I think Intel make this. It's an F320 C3TD. And again, no data at all. And again, Alibaba are offering me chips by the 10,000, but won't tell me what they are. And last of all, a... 62S, although it's a stylized S, so it may be of the logo, 16256EU-55LLT. The fact it's got a dash 55 tells me it's probably some sort of memory chip, and that will be the speed of it. That's another little BGA. Running out of boards now. In fact, I think this might be the... Yeah, I think this is the bottom board. Because there's a connection there going off to the LCD display. There are a few more screws, but not many. And in fact, it looks like there's only three screws left. Come to the board in a second, because that's caught my eye. What earth is that? Ah, I know what that is. This is the inverter circuit for the, the backlight. Wrapped it in plastic. A miniature backlight driver. High voltage output. Small choke there. Bit of sponge. And what I think that can't be the transformer, can it? chip there that runs it. So put my hands at the back there so you can focus in. I don't know what this is. Wherever it was, I just broke it. Connection at the end, pad in the middle, pad underneath. But uh, well, there we go, that's one dead inverter board, so I guess I won't be putting it back together again.
what else do we have? This board is just a basic header for the ports on the bottom. screws left now holding in the screen which pops out like that here's the screen which is 240 by 320 16 bit colors, so 64,000 colors, 65536. So you can see there's a Toshiba screen. With cold cathode tubes pre clipped in the side. And you can see there's another connection there because it's got the touch screen on the front and that is just held in a bit of adhesive, there we go so that's the back off, that's I don't know what metal that is it's, it's very light it might be more magne I don't know if it's more magnesium or some sort of aluminium alloy, I don't know so here's the screen, there's the part number on the back. And you're getting closer inside. That was actually there's the resist, resistive panel which is quite oops, quite tough. You can see from here where it gets the tough book name from because there is you would take that would take some serious impact for you to actually get through this to the point that either breaking the resistive t uh, surface or certainly getting through deep enough to damage the LCD. I just realized as well in here the cold cathode tube is in there. Still can't see it yet. So it's basically shining straight down, straight down the side, I think. There we have it. How's that for a strip tube? Compare that with the T8. Not much left in here now. It's a backlit keyboard. Which is there. No components, nothing fancy. Little microphone. And that leaves the brains of the outfit. This board here, we have a Samsung K4S56-1632D-TC75, which is a 32 megabyte dynamic RAM chip. We have an Intel E28F128 flash chip, which is 32 megabytes of flash. We have the same two buffer chips that we saw on the compact flash board earlier. Various small chips and meaningless labels. A Philips UDA 1343TT, which is an audio codec. A big chip marked SA2CF C1DA50285, and I can't find any trace of it, but I can buy one. I just don't know what it is. I'm really not having much luck on these chips. 
There's a BA5210, again I don't know what it is. It's an RM33CA. BBADS7846E. Oh, here's one I might be able to find. An LT1769CGN, which is a battery charger. Over on the other side we have an LCX374, which is eight D-type flip-flops. An LCX373, which is eight tri-state latches. A DS2438, which is a battery monitor, which explains why it's right next to the battery terminals. A MediaQ MQ1132, which is an LCD controller. And we wrap up with another 32 meg of RAM, another 32 meg of flash, and a strong arm GDS 1110BD, which is the brains of it all. One more chip here. This is on the bottom board, where it connects into its dock. That's an RS232. Uh, level converter SP3243 ECA so there we go one Panasonic Toughbook CFP1 not so tough anymore don't worry I haven't forgotten about that nice magnesium case I'll have some fun with that in a future video but at least now you know what's inside them just go ahead and build one now easy enough yeah right thanks for watching